Welcome to another SV Links video. And this week, we're going to be working hard on the strip planking of the port hull of the boat. And we're going to see how far we can get. We want to get the entire thing dry fitted and then get on to putting on epoxy. That means we've got to take all of the strips back off of one yeah. side. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and all 300 screws. And then we'll um, put them back on one at a time and glue them together with epoxy and wipe off all the excess on the inside and out and all that good stuff. And we'll see how far we get this week. So let's get to it. Yeah. It's Monday, so it's time to start up another week and today we're going to finish up this weird insert area on both sides of the holes. And uh, if we can get all that done today, then tomorrow we can start epoxying those strips in. So let's get to work. I didn't want to make you watch us get in the bunny suits again and cut these, but uh, we did uh, cut um, a bunch more strips here. And so now we're going to try uh, cutting those in over here. That's about half of what we still need to cut. So there will be yet another trip into the bunny suits later today to cut some more, but it was getting hot. So we thought we would do some strip planking and then come back and cut some more later. What we're doing here is we're fitting all these ones in like this. So we're just matching them up here, marking the two. And we found it's just easier to cut them right here. like that seems in there beautifully so now we head down the other end to do the same thing all right so as you can see we have to seam in along here as well and so the one we're doing right now comes in right here so all we have to do is find his start point which is right there and it's end point, which is right there. Got ourselves a line here. Now we just cut along that line. Okay. All right, so now we're just going to run down the hole and put all those screws in. Right now what we're doing is we're dry fitting each of these strips and these screws are just temporary. They just hold them in place and we'll be taking these strips back off and then epoxying them on, putting the screws back in and then once that dries, we'll pull off the screws and move on to the next phase. Now as far as these parts that stick out right here, we'll put a block here to hold these little tips in, uh, kind of like we did right down there. And those are just to hold it while we do the epoxy. And one thing I wanted to show you over here, there's an old saying that there's many ways to skin a cat, but in our case, it really is a cat, a cat of a ran, and we are skinning it with these. And there's lots of ways you can configure how these are being put on. What we decided to do was to take this down to exactly one foot nine inches, which is from the top up there, right where the top of this board is. And that's how deep this boat drafts. And so we want these, the part that, that's in the water, so your water line is about here, to come down from here. And from above the water line, 
we decided that we would have these straight planks that go all the way down. So this is above the water line and this is below the water line where they'll meet right here. So here we are cutting another strip off of the main panel. We have to cut about 50 of these to create one of these hulls. And each one is a 50 foot long cut. But we have this uh, saw on a sled and there's a guide that runs along the left side and we can adjust how thick we want each of these strips to be. And then we just run down the whole thing and try not to make a mess. So Brian's using a vacuum to help clean up at least some of the powder coming off. Seven more to go. Well, as you can see, we're getting down to that last few pieces. We've probably got three strips to go in. We've cut two already for each side over here. And then that'll get us up to the final one, which we're going to have to custom measure and make sure we've exactly the right width for that last whiskey piece. And so we're closing in on it. Yeah. So this is my sister Rhonda. She has come to help today and we're peeling off a uh, peel fly from the strips and the fact is, uh, what we decided is for the next hole, we're going to pre-peel the whole large panels before we cut them, rather than peel each individual piece, so it'll take a little more time. It's not a big deal because we have to pull each one of these strips off before we fiberglass it anyway, so not a big deal, but it would have saved a little time if we'd uh, pulled it ahead of time. We'll do that on the next hole. If you're not familiar with it, peel ply is a material that they place on top of the epoxy and it puts a nice surface on it that's ready to bond to another piece of epoxy later without having to do sanding first. All of the panels we get from Shonig are all coated on both sides with peel ply. Okay, so today we're going to put the final planks on both sides of the port canoe. The final piece that we were going to put into the side is a very custom cut piece. It's on an arc, so we had to draw that from the inside and then bring it over the table and custom cut that. But here we are. Okay, it's the last piece. It's the whiskey plank. Almost. It's a tight fit. There we go. People who know the Admiral know that she is a very tidy and organized person. So as soon as we finished up uh, the last pieces, she started collecting up all the little scraps and stuff and getting our yard ready for the next stage without a lot of trash underfoot. Well, as the Admiral just told you, we have finished up the entire drip planking here all the way down so that last little one was kind of a pain to get in there just a little sliver out there but next up we're going to remove all of them on one side and then we're going to start taking off the peel ply on each one of those and we'll epoxy it back onto the hull permanently so that's up next 
All right, well, we've reached a milestone here since we got the dry fitting of the first porthole all finished up. And what I wanted to mention was that we had a plan, and there's a video about that for phase one, but no plan survives first contact with the enemy is the old saying. And in this case, uh, our enemy is the delays that we've had in getting our laminating epoxy from South Africa. Been a whole host of problems. You can go back through the videos and see all our talk about the problems with not making it into our shipping container because it was deemed hazardous materials. Well, that's been ongoing. And in fact, our sycamine laminating epoxy has still not left South Africa. And we're now months and months and months away since the rest of the kit was getting ready to ship. It might leave by the end of April and get here towards the end of May, but even that's not guaranteed yet. And so our plan of what order we were gonna build things in relied upon getting that sycamine epoxy sooner than this. For example, we can put the epoxy between these strips, which is West Systems epoxy, but, and we have that thanks to West System, but we don't have the epoxy to use for laminating the basalt cloth over the top. So once we get these strips, the epoxy together, we're kind of stopped on this hull. And that really changes the order in which we're going to do everything. Because what we're not going to do is waste time. We're going to stay on schedule. And the way we can stay on schedule is by working on something different. So what you're going to see is that we're going to reorder the things that we build. And we're going to start by building something so completely out of order that we wouldn't have gotten to this for months which is the four beam that goes across between the hulls at the, at the bow of the boat. So we're gonna set up all the forms for that and we're going to build that cross beam and put the carbon fiber on it, all that good stuff. Get that done and we can use the time we're still waiting on the laminating epoxy to get here to build that four beam. And if the laminating epoxy is still not here, we'll move on to doing things like building the dagger boards, which again is out of order, but we do need to do it eventually. Uh, and then if we still don't have the epoxy, then we'll perhaps we'll build the cabin top. So we're not going to waste any time while we're waiting for this, but we may have to do a lot of things out of order just so that we can keep working. And then we'll just have to kind of store them for a few months until we need them. So that's sort of the plan. But for this next week, we're going to start epoxying these together with West Systems epoxy. So we've made the decision to kind of do this differently than Schoening uh, recommended on there, and we have our reason for it. Now we did check with them and they said, yes, you can do it that way, so it's not the way we normally would do it. So they're not saying we can't, and we have our reasons why we want to do this. And what this is, is we're gonna start by putting the top two planks on and epoxy them together in the center here. And we're gonna work our way down instead of working our way from the bottom up. And the reason we want to go from the top down is simply that we can remove all these off, put on the top two, and then after about 30 minutes after epoxying, we need to wipe off the excess. And we can reach underneath to do that at the top here. And then as we put each strip on to the boat, we can reach in from here, because these will all be out of here, and wipe off the epoxy, put the next one on, wipe off the epoxy. And when we get down to the bottom here, we can reach right underneath here and wipe off the last one. And the reason we find that better is that if we went from the bottom up, yes, we could wipe them as we got up here, but once we reach up at the top here, there's no way to reach in anymore. And then what can we do? Well, then we have to crawl under each one of these sections down here and get up underneath of there to wipe off the excess epoxy. And I don't really want to crawl up and in there if we don't have to. And by going from the top down, we get to avoid that. And the thing is, is that as you'll see, you know, you think the gravity matters here, and it does for the epoxy, but we're gonna epoxy the top edge of each plank as we're putting it in anyway, even though we're going this direction. And so uh, the gravity will still work for us. So that's the plan, and we'll see how it goes on the porthole number one, and maybe we'll change our mind for the starboard hole when we do it. But that's why we're gonna do the first one, and we'll give it a try. So here's what we did before we start taking the planks off. If we've numbered these from the top here all the way down as you can see there are 25 separate strips here and so when we take them off we can know what order we need to put them back in at. 
Now that we've dry fitted every single strip onto the port canoe, we're going to remove them all. Well, at least off this side first, and we'll do the other side on another day. And we'll just unscrewing them all the way along and we'll just set them on our table over here. And that way we're ready to start working by going for our top down epoxying of these planks or strips back onto the boat. And so it just took a few minutes to unscrew all of the, oh, I don't know, 300 screws that we had to get to uh, remove these strips. But Brian and I worked real quickly and got them all off onto the table. And that allows us to do the next phase, which is, of course, uh, removing the peel ply that's still on there. And then we'll get to epoxying them back onto the forms. All right, so that was quick. And now we're down to the last one. It's Saturday, and we're hard at work at epoxying in strips as we go down. So it's a little bit slow work. It takes hmm, probably 45 minutes per strip minimum to uh, put them in. It could be up to an hour. The last one was only 45 because we're getting a little better at it. It's getting good at pre-measuring things over here, so uh, that speeds things up. This is our prep area where we're using the West System epoxy. and. Uh, Right now, uh, we're using the fast hardener, though we may be switching over to the slow soon, simply because the weather's getting warmer. It's 88 degrees today, so, so that limits our time with the fast. So we may switch over to the slow soon, and of course our epoxy. And we have this in a four gallon jug, but we have a 53 gallon drum of this. We just refill this when we need to. We haven't had to yet, but we will on that. And then when we mix it, it's by weight, so we, we figured out that for a full length plank, we need right now, full length, we need 30 pumps from each of these. And the way the pumps work is just one for one, even though it's a five to one mixture, but the pumps take care of that. We just go one for one. And then on a scale, we're gonna now put in our fillers. So um, we have a microfiber and we have a silica. And so the microfiber one we put in at 3% and then that's by weight. And then we do however much silica is needed to thicken it up to about a mayonnaise consistency. And we've already figured out how much we need for a 30 pump, so we can just measure that ahead of time. Now we can just dump in the two, mix it up real well, get it into a Ziploc bag, and then we can put it on like cake frosting along there. And that seems to get us to smooth this bead along the top edge of the uh, strip. And so that's the fastest way we can get it going. Because again, in this 88 degree weather, it's gonna set up pretty quickly. But we're not having too much trouble with that at this point. The strips are going on. And then sometimes have to clamp them uh, to make sure that the boards align in the middle between the various BF ribs there. And sometimes there'll be a little bit of sag between them. So if that's the case, we put a clamp there until it sets up, which doesn't take all that long. And there you have it. We have four down and 21 to go uh, to get this side of the hole finished up and then we'll have to repeat it all on the other side. So we'll be doing this all week. Another thing we discovered yesterday when we were epoxy the first couple boards is there's a massive difference of something that's in the sun or in the shade as far as how fast that epoxy cures. So since this tip of the uh, bow of the boat here is forward of our shade area here, it was just in the sun yesterday, so for while we're doing this epoxy, we brought in a small easy up so that we can keep this in shade so that it's curing at the same rate as the rest of the epoxy on the strip. Uh, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we're using West System 105 epoxy resin, and we love this stuff. And one of the reasons we love it is the dispenser. Uh, we just have to pump the same amount of pumps from the epoxy resin and the hardener, and we don't have to worry about getting the mix right. So it's excellent. And then they give it to us in both fast and slow hardeners. And so as the temperatures go up, we'll switch to the slow hardener and give us a little more time to work. But this West System epoxy is working out great. And we set them here on these clamps so that we can get a vertical surface to put our bead 
of epoxy on so that it doesn't fall off. Once the whole bead's on, then we just lift it into place and squish it out. And that's what's allowing us to come down from a top down versus bottom down, bottom up, because uh, normally if you were putting the epoxy here, of course it would want to drip off, but we're applying the epoxy on the vertical surface and then just squishing it up. And so that's working out really well, and it's allowing us to clean this underside between each plank really easily as we go down. And so we won't have to crawl up underneath it here, as I mentioned earlier in a video. So it's working out quite well, and we just uh, put it on down here, squish it up. All right, now that the bead is on, we're just going to lift it up. Let's get this lined up here. Exactly. All right, let's get the one right by that clamp. Is it lined up? Now it's just a matter of doing a little cleanup. Uh, typically we wait a few minutes to let it get uh, a little bit harder, but where well, there's a little gaps, so we'll start right now. The part of the strip that you see hanging down is because we split the strip back a few feet and we epoxy that part separately from a seaming in the top edge of it. You'll also notice some excess epoxy sticking out those white areas. That's because yesterday when we were in the sun, that set up a little fast. And so we're going to have to sand that off rather than just scrape it off like I'm doing right there. Sometimes the strip will sag just a little bit between the two ribs where it's screwed in. In those cases, we just take a board and prop it up to make sure that they're pushed up and there isn't any sag and so that the epoxy squirts out properly and bonds. Let's give you a close up view so you can see how they're lining up along here. Let's get that off of there. I want that to epoxy on. So they're coming along just fine. Now in my phase one video that we posted a while ago, I estimated about 45 minutes to epoxy each one of these strips. We started at 8 a.m. It's now 11 a.m. We've done four. And that does include arriving, getting all our tools out, getting set up and such. And so it really is taking just about 45 minutes per strip, just what I estimated. So, so far, we're right on track. Now it's just a matter of doing some cleanup. We need to get the squeezed out epoxy off of the strips, both above and below by reaching up underneath. And once they're all cleaned up, we just let this set up and then we would get onto the next strip. So we're gonna call out a wrap for today. Uh, we got seven planks done. So that's good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those two we did the other day. And uh, Monday, we'll probably get the other next eight or so. And then Tuesday, we'll be finished with this side and we'll get to work on the other side of the canoe and get that done. But we'll call it a wrap for today. And that will be the end of this week's video as well. And uh, Monday starts our next week. So I'll get to editing the video and we'll get it out soon. Well, that wraps up another week of our SG Lakes video, construction of our new boat. And as you can see, we've got the dry fitting done on this. But uh, we've got a lot work to go because we have to put epoxy between every one of these strips. So that means we've got to remove them all, put them back on and epoxy them on. So there's a lot of work to go. And we did have a little mistake that we're going to have to fix with some of the biscuits like here. And so we're going to have to redo a few biscuits when we take this off of the boat. But that'll be next week. And we're also going to do some other things next week besides work on the e epoxy. Because the thing is, is that there's going to be a few hours each day where we can't really epoxy. It's either wet in the morning or really hot in the afternoon. Yeah. So what we're going to do differently is uh, we're going to construct the four beam. And we'll start by building the strong back and getting all the forms out for that. So that'll all be next week. And uh, we'd like to thank all of our patrons and we do have a new one this week and we appreciate all of you uh, it's it's incredibly important to us yes we have 
the kit purchased, but there's a lot of other costs that are going to come up, unforeseen things, and uh, all of your help is going to make this possible. Greatly appreciated. So thank you again to everyone who, who's donated. And thank you for watching. I don't want to make light of that. If you don't have uh, money to donate at Patreon, that's okay. Watching our videos really helps as well. So thank you. And, right. and don't forget to like and subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified of next week's video. Yeah, because that'll help build our channel. And the more we build the channel, the more patrons and uh, viewers we're going to get. And that's going to really help us finish this boat on time yeah because <laughs> that's our goal regardless of any small setbacks all right so we'll see you next week bye